Good morning to everybody. I am Alessandra Venturini, the holder of the Germone chair. I am glad to introduce uh, the, the eighth lecture of the series uh, uh, Cocument, which is a, a seminar of the chair consumption of cultural good as driver of MIGA integration. Um, let me introduce myself for a second. I am full professor of political economy at the University of Torino. I'm also director of the interdisciplinary diploma on European migration studies, which we hold at the University of Torino with the, the department, with the colleague of the department of law and the colleague of political science. And I was deputy director of the Karim project at the University or European University Institute for 2012 to 2017, when after I founded the, with Philippe Farg the Migration Policy Center, and I was deputy director for a long time. I am an economist, um, and I visited many universities, Brown University, many international institutions, the ILO, the OECD, the OX, the IOM, the MPI. I'm also a member of many research centers on migration, is IA, child theory, and also a member of the executive board of DivCult Div in Miscoe, the one in which we have also Marco Martiniello and uh, uh, V. Siebert, that probably you, you met uh, last week. My research is mainly in innovation, uh, migration innovation, migration and effect in, in the labor market, in the destination country, in the sending country. Uh, integration was uh, one of the last field of research I did. And uh, exactly in this field, I was very much interested in understanding the role of of cultural good in favor of integration. So the lecture of today, and I share my slide, are exactly on this field. On this field. The effect of participation in cultural activity on migration integration. Um, this presentation is divided in two parts. The first part is on migrant integration, and the second part is on consumption culture good, and the, the attempt that we try to make a bridge between these two fields. The word integration is uh, assimilation, integration, inclusion, are used interchangeably in economic, but instead they have a long history. Assimilation is based on the French model. French, mo French has a lot of people coming from, for migrants coming from former colonies. So they were in a certain way already French citizens. They were educated in France. And when they migrated to France, the main idea was that they should become French citizen, like the French citizen. So assimilation was the model of uh, staying in the country. Integration instead was um, the mo German model. Germany has this model of temporary migration. Temporary migration implies that migrants were there for a short time, mainly for work. They were not supposed to become German citizens. And so they were left in their own space, speaking their own language, languages. The assimilation to the German culture was not imposed, not even um, suggested. As you can imagine, these two models didn't work. Didn't work the assimilation model in France, didn't work the integration by separation in Germany, and now the two countries move to a mixed model. This uh, war, this debate could be endless. There are thousands of pages in social science on this field. Now the politically accepted wording is inclusion. But for the economy, um, for the economist instead, uh, you will see the two wording are used uh, without any distinction. Why? Because uh, the large research, uh, economic research, is only saying that economic integration can be for, so integration in the labor market is a prerequisite of cultural integration. So they 
when they look at the labor market, what they mean, they want that migrants should have the same opportunity that have uh, natives with the same characteristics. So if you understand, this is not an inclusion, it's much closer to assimilation, so they should be equal to the natives. So we always have natives as the benchmark, the point of references. And uh, the model that we use is very simple. We want to explain if the wage, the employment, the labor force participation, the unemployment rate of the migrant is uh, the same of the one of the natives. So we have on the left the characteristics, the, the, um, the pr product, the wage, the employment, the labor force, and on the right, this uh, success in the labor market is explained by the individual characteristics. Economists always use measurable variables. So individual characteristics, which are, that we are able to measure, age, sex, education, in general, we have years of education. So the composition of the family, if there are children, not children, uh, if it is a wife, relative, and the experience of the job. So these are the individual characteristics, plus two other variables I used. This year since migration, that's implied the duration of staying. Do you remember when um, Tali Katzer was speaking, she was speaking about this acculturation pro pro process, which imply the consumption that the more you stay in the destination country, the more you become closer and you start to use the cultural good of the destination country. In fact, we cannot study integration without a time dimension. And here since migration, it means the number of years that you spend in the country is exactly a proxy of the duration. Another important variable is the size of the diaspora, the amount of citizens of the can your country of origin are, that are living in the country of destination. The diaspora is a very important variable in explaining the integration of Magna in the labor market of destination, because you remember for sure, Little Italy, Chinatown, they were entity uh, in New York, uh, are completely separated from the surrounding. People were living there, speak, reproducing the country of origin, speaking the local dialect, the local of the country of origin dialect, and were not integrating. The idea is that the larger is the diaspora, the less contact you have in the destination country with the people living in the country, and the less you will be integrated. The less you have information, the less job contact you have, and less likely is that you that you learn the language that you learn the way of living in the destination country and so on so just keeping what we were saying before this is the year of experience something like years since migration how, for how long people are working which are very close to years since migration, given that migrants come to work. And here we have the wage profile of natives. You can have two possibilities for the migrant. As soon as they arrive, they have a wage which is lower than the one of natives. All the research, empirical research were showing this result. But the more they stay, the more they learn. So the wage increase. And you can have two options. Or you have the red line, which is called over assimilation. Imagine you have somebody who is going in a, country, in a new country. They don't know the language. They are unable to um, be productive, uh, to increase their productivity and make them um, able uh, to be, uh, to access jobs which are better paid. Um, or instead, the way the migrant remain below the wage profile of natives, and the more they stay in the destination country, the more the wage profile is going down. These are the two possibilities that could take place. 
the empirical results, uh, these are all data from Eurostat, we have all the European country here, the orange line is uh, the wage, the, this is the activity rate, the activity rate of natives, you have the um, non-European citizen are the orange diamond, and the blue one are the European migrants. As you see, the activity rate of the non-European city is always lower than the one of natives. If we look at the unemployment rate, we have the opposite result. The activity rate, uh, the unemployment rate is always higher than the one of natives. Of course, uh, the European one, um, the, for the European migrant, uh, the difference with the native is smaller, but for the non-European migrant, is very large. Um, if we look uh, at the employment rate for people with tertiary education, we have the, the opposite. So, uh, over-education is very strong, so people with tertiary education, they're doing manual jobs. This very diffuse this uh, for non European citizens, much less for European. Um, if you want a final measure, you have we have um, um, the amount of people living in very low work intensity, so they are enabled, the extra European migrant, third national country migrant, so the non European migrant have much higher probability of being poor. So if we want to sum up this, uh, there is another slide after we sum up, this is so over education. The round point are the native, the other are the foreigner. Over education, that means that they are more educated than the job they are doing. So the, if we want to conclude, there is a large evidence of under assimilation. All these graphs that I presented to you are controlling for age and education. So, of course, there are variables that are missing. We, can we speak of discrimination? It's very difficult to speak of discrimination because uh, the economy and the economists like to measure what is happening, but they're not sure that uh, the variables that they use are good enough uh, to test, uh, for instance, the quality of the education. For instance, if we take the number of years of the education, but we don't have the, the grade, uh, the, you don't have a measure of the quality of the person, of how clever they are, how good is the university from which they come from. You know that some university has a much higher uh, reputation. That is the reason why a lot, they have a large demand. They can be also private university exactly because people uh, know that this university has a very high reputation. And the data that you, you use, unfortunately, are unable to capture all this detail. So uh, we have to be very cautious when we think about that there are migrants that are discriminated. In fact, we don't have also good measure of the knowledge of the language. So you don't have, for instance, a test which uh, declare how well they know the language of the destination. But probably there is also something else that is missing, which is uh, pro probably linked to the country of origin, to the culture of country of origin. I show you this graph. This is the log wage differential between native and different ethnic groups. And this is the year of uh, experience, which is a proxy of years since migration. And as you see, African, Asian, East European start very similar. So the differential with the native is not so high, but little by little, the differential of the African increase. While the differential of the Asian decline, the East European decline. If we take differential in day work, we have the same 
uh, result, the differential of the uh, Asian decline, of the East European decline, and uh, of um, Afri African instead increase. These two graphs are taken from, from Italy, so it's the case of Italy in 2006, so the data are 2005, and uh, this is a period of the beginning of the migration in Italy, because in Italy migration started in 1990, so there were 25 years of migration at that time in Italy, no more. Now probably the, the scenario will be different. So. Uh, we understand, however, from this graph that the country of origin play an important role. Why it play an important role? Because the employability of people is made by two parts, the hard skill and the soft skill. The hard skill are you are a plumber, you should be able to to work in this sector, to have this ability. But the soft skills are much more difficult and much more difficult to build. They represent the language, but the culture, especially they represent the ability in communication and the understanding of the message of the others, the ability in teamwork. And uh, the soft skills are strongly linked to the culture for the country of origin where people come. And so we tried something else. We try to measure the linguistic distance and the cultural distance. Um, the cultural distance, we have uh, um, many indices, especially the Osphale, uh, Osphale index, which measure the distance between the culture of two kinds. The linguistic distance also we have many major. The one that we use is Aldera Pitlikova. Uh, there are many other linguistic distance uh, measure. The two major uh, cultural distance are strongly correlated because the language and the culture they strongly linked. And also we try to devote attention with the duration of staying. Because the idea is that the contact theory, the direct contact theory, the more you meet the native citizen or the more you have contact with the society of the destination country in direct sense theory, you watch the TV, you look at the newspaper or you see uh, the people moving, the more you understand that you build your soft skill, which make you more employable. That means it is easy to have different jobs because uh, the hard skill may you suited for certain type of job, but the soft skill open to you many more windows or an opportunity to work. So uh, this is an important point, especially for integration policies that are in general centered to the hard skill, but not to the soft skill. And um, there is an important case that changed completely my perception, perception of the importance between soft skill and cultural skill. I was in a conference in Brussels and was a panel with the Minister for Integration, who was a lady. As you know, probably in Sweden, the labor force participation of women is very high, 89%. So that's mean fundamentally all the women around are working. And she was speaking about refugees. As you know, Sweden is a socialist country. The unemployment rate, the subs that they give to people that are unable to work are very high. And she was discussing that they didn't want to give this subsidy for a long time. And they were trying to bring the women as soon as we can, they can into the labor market. So we were discussing, but you not teach them the language, you don't train them the language. And the comment that she made was, uh, for me, very important. She said, we can, we will continue teaching them the language, but we want 
that they understand that in Sweden women work, should work, and we want to make them able to live in Sweden. So to transit to them this type of value. So fundamentally what she was saying, she was using a project for political refugees, uh, women, more to, to integrate them into the Swedish culture than integrated them into the Swedish labor market. So she was saying that the culture integration was a prerequisite for the economic integration. The economic integration was only an instrument to favor the, complete, the integration of the mind. Um, she was very, very determined, very active in this way. So what we have done in another paper, we have tried to study, again, all his wage um, uh, for migrant, distinguished by the migrant by linguistic distance. That means cultural distance. So here you have the wage profile of the natives, stayer. Here you have, we also distinguish by the immigrant from the south in Italy. So just to be sure that we don't mix up too much uh, variety. And here we have the migrant, which are close linguistically, and the migrant who are far linguistically maximum and minimum linguistic distance. As you imagine, controlling for education, age, all the characteristics that we, we can. So what you see that the linguistic distance is an important um, delay the integration of migrants. So the cultural effect is very important. If you look at Italy, we have the Romanian, which are here. You have the linguistic distance, the index of Aldera, uh, Pitli, Kova. And here you have Chinese, this I'm sure is Prato, Albanian, Moroccan, Indian, and so on. And the distribution of them, you have a group which is very far. In addition, here we have the community. We said that the larger is the share the dimension of the community, the lower will be the migrant integration because they remain into the community, they speak their own language, they don't know other, they, they have low, less opportunity to know our other people, and this also less opportunity to find jobs different from the one that the community is um, adopting. On the one hand, the community is very helpful when the migrants arrive, they provide support, uh, introduction in the labor market, but the more they stay, the more the community becomes an enclave uh, and has, in general, a negative effect on the migrant wage. However, this is not true for the migrant uh, linguistically close. So the size of the community interact with the linguistic distance has a negative effect for the country which are far linguistically. So that's mean I take the, the linguistic distance for cultural distance. So the culture matter in the effect of integration and the larger the community, the more negative is the effect. But for the Romania, which are close linguistic, the effect is minimal. So fundamentally, what I want to say that the diaspora abroad can be a community which support the migrant if it is linguistically close. Otherwise, it's become an enclave which for the community which is linguistically far. And this become negative and we have many policies that uh, try to disperse migrants around the country to favor their integration, to reduce their habit of staying with their uh, friends. This is difficult to say for the Italian that when they are abroad, they always make a small circle, but uh, this is uh, many times efficient. So with this slide, I finished the first section integration, showing that the culture is very important. And I pass on the second part, uh, sorry, 
No, no, I, I have not finished. I have another slide. In this um, slide, this was very interesting because we have done something else to be sure of what we were saying. Because you remember the slide in which I was saying Moroccan, African, no, um, African, um, Asian, East European. We wanted to understand if uh, the segmentation that we see, if this difference depends on the segmentation in the labor market. Let us say the Africa, they go in the agricultural sector, the Romanian, they go in the construction sector, and um, the Asian go to the service sector. This sector, there is very little possibility to upgrade, uh, and that's the reason why we have we find this lower wage profile. So in this graph, uh, you see that these are the natives, uh, local native, not in immigrant job. This is the wage profile. Uh, what are the immigrant job? We took all the sectors in which 70% uh, of the MAG are employed, and where there is also a minority of native. This other group here, and this uh, the pink line that you see is very close to all foreigner, all the foreigner always an immigrant job. The pink line are the natives, so the Italians, that work always in immigrant jobs. So what we see is a segmentation when they enter, they enter this type of jobs and they remain there. If also the natives remain there, you would say, so it's not a problem of cultural linguistic systems, it's a problem of segmentation. When you enter in this job, the wage is there. Yes, but the narratives that enter in the immigrant jobs are able to exit this line in between, are able to reach uh, the, the other one. So we analyze the probability of exiting from this uh, sector. Of course, the linguistic distance matter. So the possibility, even in a segmented labor market, uh, the linguistic distance play a very important role. And with this slide, I finish the, the part on integration. Let me move to the culture. Culture for economists uh, is a very complex word because it means value, trust. Uh, we discuss a lot on the vertical transmission versus horizontal transmission. Vertical transmission imply that parents pass the value, the culture, to the children. It is very difficult to affect it. If you look at the society, there are many empirical studies that, try, that show that the vertical transmission dominates the horizontal transmission. So a professor, friends, because it has much less powerful power. Um, there is another thing, but we don't study this. This is outside our scope. We study something um, more simple. The, you, uh, the, the people that work in the culture, they always speak of participation in cultural activities. In, I was speaking at the beginning of conceptual cultural goods. But in fact, participation is a more appropriate wording because participation also have a more emotional value. It's not like a sandwich. You buy a sandwich when you finish, you are happy, but that's all. You participate in a culture activities. You can have a passive and active participation and the two have different effects. But what is uh, more important for the economist you find this uh, information in different data set, different statistical source, sources. While you find the passive participation is the number of people you go to museum, concert, the cinema, and so on, uh, the active participation you need a survey, some an inquiry. The other difference is the content. Is the content uh, ethnic? So is a concert of African music, or is the concert inter or multi-ethnic, or is a concert of the destination country? So this is an important distinction because what we expect is that both 
passive participation, what I call consumption, that is not the proper word, or active participation, on the one hand, they reinforce they belong into a group, or even to a, a national group. But if, if the content is a national one, they try to bridge between the national, the ethnic, and the country destination culture effect. Um, let us look at, for a second the at the consumption of cultural world. You remember that Ateca Mestoy, Victoria Ateca Mestoy was mentioning that um, the, the participation in cultural group has to constrain. Um, they consider consumption of cultural world a type of leisure activity, and you need time and money. However, this is uh, traditional. If you want to go for a restaurant, uh, now you can. Uh, you can. You need time, and you need also money. Uh, the same if you want to go to the museum. However, the cultural goods are many and very different in costs and constraint in general. For the native, also education play an important role. I will call this type of constraint technical accessibility. So native and foreigner has the same technical accessibility problem. But migrant has also a problem of accessibility because they come from different culture. So we have cultural accessibility because in a country of destination, the majority of cultural goods offer are done for the majority of the population. Migrant in general, 10% of the population are done based on the culture of the other. That means why they could be important for integration. I prepare this uh, picture because uh, we have monetary cost. In blue, we have what things, uh, accessibility characteristics that are important also for the native, the monetary cost, and there are cultural goods cultural participation in media. Also the media are cultural good, but of course a monetary cost for museums, theater, live concerts, cinema, sport event, dancing venue, are much higher than watch the TV, the radio, newspaper, and magazine. The book uh, probably are more costly than newspaper and all the other. The time. The time is not only that to go to the museum you need at least two hours, or to the theater you need three hours, but also when you do, you go to the cinema, you can do only that. You cannot do anything else. While for the media, you can watch a TV while you are eating, while you are working, uh, playing with children, while you are knitting, doing play, doing gymnastic, everything. The book is more difficult to do many other things and so on. So, and also the informational, informational content, why it is easy for live sport dancing venue, dancing venue is much more difficult for the other one. And um, difficult for boot, much easier. But these are, however, accessibility constraints that everybody finds. The migrant, they have two other uh, constraint, which are the linguistic barrier and the cultural distance. The cultural distance can be very high for museums, theater, live concert, less for cinema, and even less for dancing event or live sport event, even low for TV, radio, and so on. And the linguistic barrier, because you, for the live sport event, the linguistic barrier is not important for the dancing venue as well. For the concert, likely less, but for the cinema, for the theater, the linguistic barrier is very important. This brings us uh, to the to the technical accessibility, what we meant, and the cultural accessibility. And we have I have divided this in two parts: the acculturation phase, which is the more you stay in the country destination, the more you are exposed to the cultural destination and then you learn you you learn how to interpret the action of the other so the culturation phase is similar to years since migration the cultural heterogeneity instead is a more permanent barrier to the um, 
to, to this phenomenon. And uh, we have variables that measure this, the technical accessibility, employment, if you are employment, the wage that you have, the time, the number of children, this, uh, if you are employed, uh, you have less time, but you have more money to buy the cultural goods. But if you have more children, you have less time to uh, to go for concert museum. This is, as we said, the acculturation phase uh, here since migration, the intention to stay, and the acculturation heterogeneity, which is the nationality, the linguistic distance, and the religion. With the research with Bertacchini and Zotti, we were using a special survey of income and living condition of foreigners in Italy in 2012 with 15,000 observations. And we studied the characteristics of the demand of cultural goods of migrants. The first re important result is that 80% of the interviewed has no consumption of cultural goods. The technical, but what is important is that the technical accessibility variable do not dominate, while the cultural accessibility variable with acculturation phase, the cultural heterogeneity dominate. The acculturation phase also, so yes, is migration, and this value is very important, but especially the cultural heterogeneity. For that reason, we have this graph which explains the probability of consumption of cinema, which is the more easily to consume. And you have, you see, 40%, the average is. You have Ecuador, Ukraine, and Poland, Moldova. And on the left, you have Bangladesh, China, India. So this group will be always at the bottom. And this is the more consumed good from the foreign community. If you look at the concert, we have again Poland, the Ukraine, but on the less on the less you have Bangladesh, India, China, but this is ten percent. That means that the probability that they went at least one of the ten percent of total stock of population. And the top is 20%. So you see, cinema is 40%. So is the more easy, more accessible for them. If we look at theater, the most used is just one 10%. So as you see, theater is very far from uh, Bangladesh, China, always on the left. India is much more because more traditional their culture, but the theater do not exist in the Arab country, and that is very far. Also, dancing event, dancing venue is, is, uh, is not very diffused because it's 25 percent the top. You have Peru, Ukrainian. Uh, this is very close to their culture. After you have Ukraine, Poland, Moldova, and here is always India, China. If we look at sport events, again, Bangladesh, China, India. So this, the country of origin has a, a very important, uh, this is playing a very important role, role. The problem of this data in which we can study the consumption of cultural good are in general special survey. We have large data set, so they represent very well the foreign population, but they last just one year. Or we have small data set that last longer year, but they're not representative of the change in the population because migration change all the time. So we are good, suited to study the demand of cultural good, but not to study the effect of consumption of cultural goods. So the employment is part of the constraint, so the budget constraint or time constraint for the consumption of cultural good is and is not sufficient to study what we were interested in this, that employ consumption of cultural good produce soft skill, which are used in employment. And that um, if you want to study 
the integration of migrant and the effect of consumption cultural good on the integration of migrant, we need data that are able to eliminate the individual heterogeneity, individual fix. So you need a panel in which you can put an individual fixed effect because you want to isolate the effect of consumption cultural good and eliminate the cultural effect. So with this uh, type of data set, you can study the characteristics of the culture, but don't you cannot study the effect of consumption, soft skill. Uh, and so um, the creation of soft skill is uh, um, surveyed in the literature in many other type of uh, research, but not linked directly on the employment. So we need uh, another type of data set and we need especially to make experiment. The, the weaknesses of the experiment are that uh, we have small numbers, but we can find the causality, the real link between cultural goods and uh, the effect on employment. This is important because in this way we can provide indication for the integration policy. And remember that the Swedish lady responsible of uh, the integration of refugees women, if co cultural integration is coming first, then economic integration. If cultural integration favor economic integration and, or not. And with this line, I close because tomorrow, Andrea Ricci will serve with the research on the effect of active participation in chorus uh, with many effects that provide you example of this line of research, which is what will follow. See you tomorrow. <laughs>